preparing for my <laughs> presentation it's okay let's get it on to everyone uh, by the way my name is Mars and I'm a nurse and I currently work here in London as an educator and I do train overseas nurses who are about to take their OSCE so oh by the way namaste to my fellow uh, Indian friends and kumusta mga kababayan um, today I'm just gonna speak in Taglish Kasi medyo kulang na yung bao natin na English eh. So, I'll try. And kahit medyo yung Tagalog ko is... Hmm. <laughs> Bisaya kasi ako. I'm three-fourth Bisaya and one-fourth Tagalog. So, maximize ko yung mga salitang ugat na yan. So, yeah. So, let's do this. So, uh, today guys, uh, we're gonna discuss about how to prepare for OSCE uh, pre-departure. So, ano ba yung pwede na nating gawin habang andyan pa kayo sa Pinas para ma-prepare natin ang ating sarili for the upcoming OSCE kung andito na kayo sa London. So, uh, you might have some friends guys na nagsasabi na ah, OSCE is really overwhelming. no? Uh, which is basically true naman, actually. Kung uh, wala kang saktong preparation. Uh, you know, OSCE guys really needs a holistic preparation. So, hindi lang yung skills-based tsaka yung knowledge-based ang kailangan natin bigyan ng pansin. But also our emotional and our spiritual aspect as well. So, um, for now guys, uh, I will give you yung top 3. Yeah. 1, 2, 3. <laughs> top 3 tips na sa tingin ko ay very uh, important at napaka-useful na, na aspect na kailangan natin bigyan ng pansin uh, pagdating sa OSCE. So, tingnan natin. Let's check it out! So, guys, as what I've told you earlier, we gonna study about how to prepare for OSCE pre-departure. Learn the basic CPD. So, ano yung CPD? So, ito yung uh, top 3 top tips ko guys na ma-advise ko sa inyo para ma-prepare nyo yung sali nyo for the upcoming OSCE. Okay? Okay, uh, before we proceed guys, um, let's just have some latest announcement muna. So, which you can also find sa NMC website. Okay? Yung una guys, uh, there will be some changes in the test of competence effective June 2020. Oh my God! March, April, May, June. So, in uh, four months time. So, ano yung included uh, ano yung in, uh, included sa, na yun, sa changes na yun? So, yung CBT will be split into two parts, uh, which are the numeracy and theory. Yung OSCE will have 10 stations. Currently, kasi ngayon, we have 6 stations. Pero, uh, by June, maging 10 na yun. So, uh, uh, ano yung included dun? Of course, uh, yung APAI is andun pa din, yung assessment, planning, implementation, at saka evaluation. Tapos, uh, instead of two skills, four skills na ang, uh, i- ang kanilang i-assess. Plus, another two new stations will be introduced. So, ano yung uh, new stations na yun? Uh, ito yung uh, they will assess for your values and behaviors and at saka yung evidence-based practice. So far guys, wala pa tayo, pa tayo masyadong uh, input uh, regarding sa bagong stations na to. But uh, the good news is, um, there will be an upcoming OSCE uh, Facilitator Conference by April 2020. So, uh, which is, uh, pupunta din ako kasi uh, every trust, uh, they will send at uh, two representative so i will be joining that um conference so i'm really excited so that um i will know as well kung ano yung um latest update kasi they will also gonna discuss about these two new stations na iintroduce nila by june so i can't wait and i can't wait to share it to you as well guys para ma kuha naman natin no? malaman natin kung ano yung mga bago so ito yung um, invitation guys for the OSCE Facilitator Conference by April 
and I also already submitted my um, registration. So hopefully, um, I'll gain uh, more insights kung ano yung mga latest update for the OSCE. We have to take note as well, guys, of the six C's of nursing. So according to the NHS England, these are the values essential for a compassionate care. So what are included in the six C's? Of course, first is our care. Care is what defines us nurses and the type or kind of job that we do. Secondly is compassion or being compassionate on how we deliver, deliver care. Is it based on respect, dignity, and empathy? So that's the question to have to consider. Thirdly as well is courage. Courage is being able to speak up if you have any concerns, doing the right thing. That's it. Commitment, of course, commitment is the cornerstone of what we do. Competence is being knowledgeable or having the expertise in delivering effective care based on evidence-based practice. And lastly, the communication which is a key to a good and effective team working and which is also guys one of my basic tips so I will discuss about that one in the next slide okay my tip number one guys is of course mastering communication so I cannot really stress it out more how important or how vital communication is in terms of of course how we interact with our patient remember guys in OSCE on uh, on the six stations um, it might be a mannequin or a real patient you need to interact with the patient number two of course building rapport what's involved in building rapport of course it involves active listening so ano yung active listening Active listening, guys, basically is listening with all our senses. So, even if you're doing something, and then, for example, if the patient uh, complains of pain, you need to address that issue. You might ask, perhaps, questions like, where's the pain? What type of pain? Um, what's the pain level? Perhaps, you can ask about the pain score. From zero is the no pain, uh, zero is no pain, ten is the worst. Or you might ask as well if the patient's already taken some painkillers or if she or he wanted to take some painkillers and what can you do for the meantime to help the patient you know, alleviate pain perhaps do some deep breathing exercises or repositioning technique remember that one guys it's really helpful if you do it on your assessment Number three, of course, involving the patient you know, in decision making. Um, decision making, um, for example, if the patient going for surgery, the consent. Um, in terms of food preferences, if the patients have issues with diet, or even um, dying request, if a patient is on a palliative uh, treatment. And just take note, guys, that. Communications can be verbal, non-verbal, and written. And in OSCE, guys, these three aspect, aspects are being assessed. So you need to be careful no, on how you deal with your patient. So remember, guys, you need to develop that confidence, that confidence to uh, speak in English. Because in OSCE, guys, um, communication is like uh, the invincible string that connects you or binds you to the patient as well as to your assessor. And even also, if you are working in the wards or the uh, departments you are in, um, you might find it a struggle to speak and understand in English. Uh, because remember, guys, London is a very diverse country. So you might expect uh, people, people from different uh, backgrounds who still manage to speak English but their intonation or their accent is really different uh, even me when I came here to London way back um, almost five years ago 
I find it like a struggle. And yung brain ko, parang bagal-bagal. Parang wifi signal lang sa Pinas. <laughs> Ang bagal talaga, guys. So, yun. So, it took me a while to adjust. So, just remember that one, guys, na communication is really key. Perhaps you can practice by... Uh, talking to your colleagues dyan sa Pinas but if you're working in a call center so advantage yun pero try mo try mo talaga mag-speak ng English uh, or to communicate to other people to your friends kahit sabihin nila na ay ang OA naman ito pero in the long run it will really benefit you or just keep on watching movies na English movie wag muna yung mga telenovela na yan although guys sometimes ba diba, kailangan din pero yeah If it will benefit you, why not? Okay? Okay? So next one, guys, is of course, our tip number two is mastering ng pharmacology. Um, I think marami makaka-relate, no? Kasi yung pharma is one of the most difficult subject way back in college. Marami mga bagsang nito. Pero kapit lang, kapatid. Kaya yan. Um, same with your OSCE, guys. Uh, remember, four of your stations, yung implementation, I am subcuts at saka yung inhalations uh, inhalation are all medications. So dapat alam mo na yun. So ano yung kailangan natin i-, i take note? Of course, dapat alam natin yung drug classification. Kung anong klasing gamot ang ibibigay natin. At the same time, alam din natin yung side effects niya. Kasi before mo ibigay yung gamot sa pasyente, dapat ma-explain mo na kung anong klaseng gamot ang ibibigay mo at ano yung mga possible side effects niya. For example, yung giving ferrosulfate, yung vitamin, uh, 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 yung uh, iron supplement niya. So, dapat i-explain mo din na common side effect ng medication is a black tarry stool para uh, aware yung pasyente at hindi na siya magtaka. Secondly, is yung dosage. Kasi, uh, importante din yun guys, especially Uh, including as well yung unit ng measurement. For example, levothyroxine. Di ba yung levothyroxine is na, nasa microgram? So, what if yung prescription is 50 milligram? So, ibibigay mo ba? Siyempre, hindi. Kasi mali yung prescription. So, dapat uh, careful ka sa pagbibigay ng gamot kung alam mo na mali yung prescription. And yung root as well. So, pwede siya maging uh, tablet, Uh, IVTT meds for IM, for subcut or for inhalation and yung drug interaction um, a simple illustration for this one guys is yung cocodamol di ba yung cocodamol is a combination of your paracetamol at saka ng codeine so dapat aware ka na hindi ka dapat magbigay ng either one of those kung ang pasyente is nagtitake na ng cocodamol Especially, kung yung interval is masyadong uh, close, like an hour earlier, the patient already taken uh, cocodamol, tapos still complaining of pain, eh yung nakalagay sa PRN mo is paracetamol lang, every 4 to 6 hours. So, ibibigay mo, mo ba? Of course, hindi. Kasi, kasi nga, yung cocodamol is meron ng paracetamol. We have also to take note guys yung uh, rights of medication administration. So for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna focus on the seven rights ng medication which are the following. Of course, yung right patient, right medication, right dose, right time, right route, right reason, at saka right documentation. So, you have to remember all of this, especially before or prior to giving uh, medication to the patient, just to ensure na safe yung pagbigay mo, di ba? Okay, ano din yung kailangan yung i-prepare guys or i-kuan nyo na, uh, o, o, pag-aralan nyo na? Of course, yung common drug list. Dapat uh, gumawa na kayo guys ng simple, kahit yung mga common drugs lang na uh, usually binibigay mo sa pasyente. Para pagdating mo dito sa London, eh, hindi ka na masyadong mahirapan. So, I made a simple illustration guys like this. So, ang gawa ka lang ng drug classification, yung name ng drug, yung dosage, at saka yung side effects uh, ng, ng gamot. For example, gawa ka ng uh, for analgesia, paracetamol, codeine, cocodamol, at saka yung ibuprofen. 
So, ano yung dosage niya? Parastamol, 1 gram every 4 to 6 hours. Codeine, 30 to 60 milligram, 3 to 4 times per day. Codamol, 30 per 500 every 4 to 6 hours. At saka yung ibuprofen, 200 or 400 um, 3 times a day. At saka, ano yung mga possible side effects ng mga gamot? Like codeine, common side effects is constipation, dizziness, nausea, or dry mouth. And then, gawa ka din ng another column for your antihypertensive drugs. Um, just take note guys, diba sa so mga medication sa antihypertensive drugs, marami din siyang subclassification. It could either be beta blocker, custom channel blocker, is inhibitor, or yung adjutensin to receptor antagonist. You need to remember this one guys, kasi before ka magbibigay ng uh, gamot sa pasyente, of course, you need to ask then the assessor what's the latest BP and what's the late latest post rate kung magbibigay ka ng bisoprolol. Kasi diba, you need to uh, yung common uh, side effects ng bisoprolol is uh, bandicardia. So you need to ask the assessor for that one. And another column as well for antibiotics like amoxicillin, nitrofurantoin, uh, which is for UTI, tamitoprim, and yung dosage niya, and what are the possible side effects. Okay? Then, you need also to take note, guys, yung penicillin allergy. So, kung ano yung mga gamot na contraindicated kung ang pasyente ay mayroong uh, allergy sa mga penicillin cont uh, containing products. For example, you should not give the following drugs uh, like amoxicillin in coamox saka augmentin, flucosacillin, benzyl penicillin or yung penji, ampicillin, phenoxymethylphenicillin or penvi, at saka yung piperazilin or tazozin. So, dapat hindi ka magbibigay nito sa pasyente. Next one is, you need to be cautious as well if you're giving cephalosporin at saka yung mga other betal uh, lactam antibiotics kasi take note the following avoid if serious penicillin allergy like uh, anaphylaxis or yung tiyatawag natin na uh, angioedema or breathlessness, shortness of breath or fainting huwag mo talaga ibigay uh, but use with caution if non-severe allergy for example yung mga minor rash lang but still you need to clarify it with the doctor so if unsure ka Clarify mo na lang at huwag mo ibigay. Ano naman yung, ano naman yung uh, considered safe na ibigay sa pasyente? So, these are the following medications that are safe to give. Amikacin, your ciprofloxacin, clarithromycin, clindamycin, cotrimoxazole, doxycycline, erythromycin, at saka gentamicin. Pati din ang metronidazole, nitroforantoin, Ripampicin, Linisolid, Tetracycline, Dimitroprim, Tacoplanin, at saka yung Vancomycin. So all these medication guys are safe to give kung may uh, allergy ang pasyente sa penicillin. Take note of this because this is really important at very useful. And then of course, yung third tip natin guys is yung documentation which is also a central part no sa OSCE sa lahat ng station may documentation talaga. So ano yung dapat natin uh, ikun, uh, i-take note sa documentation? Of course, yung legibility of our handwriting. Medyo a couple of us might find it struggle. Just take note yung ano yung allowed sa OSCE. Of course, yung cursive writing at saka yung uppercase and lowercase lang. So bawal yung caps lock sinasabi nila para intense so sa documentation guys just be mindful of the following no um if you will write in cursive so this is correct pwede to siya sa oske if you will write in uppercase and lowercase pwede din to this is correct pero pag uh Nagsusulat ka or you will write in all capital letters no? para intense. <laughs> so, hindi to siya allowed sa OSCE. Same when you are taking your IELTS or uh, written exam. So, bawal to. So, you can only use the cursive. You can also use this uppercase and lowercase which uh, I usually use as well. Pero, 
hindi ka allowed nito. So, you're, you're not allowed to use the all capital letters. Okay? So, practice, practice. Okay. Next one is, of course, there should be no superimposition. So, instead of uh, superimposing, why not just correcting the errors? So, how to correct the error? Of course, you need to put a strike through line sa error guys na na commit mo and put your signature and date on top of on top of it. Okay? And then basically document the correct entry. Go correct. So ganito lang yun guys. So you make one line, so we call it a uh, strike through error. Okay? And then Put your signature and the date. So today is 1802. Yeah? So, ganyan lang yun. Hindi, yung, hindi pwede ang kanito. For example, I will not fail. Hindi pwede yung ganito. Yeah? So, just be mindful of that one. Dapat, it's still readable yung error mo. Okay? And this is why you guys put the word error or wrong entry on top of the words or words corrected. Um, but remember, on planning and implementation, the spaces are limited. So, kahit ito lang, kahit strike to lines, ka sign and date, okay na yun. Then, i-correct mo na lang yung words na kailangan mo i-correct. Then, okay na yun. Next tip is avoiding abbreviations. So, bawal yung mga Q for every, C na may line sa taas, um, it's not allowed. And of course, time management, practice ka. Uh, bilisan mo ng konti yung pag-write. Remember, yung planning at evaluation, uh, which are 15 minutes each, is a sit-down station. So, sulat ka lang, walang, walang patient interaction. But, it's time limited, so dapat mabilis ka ding magsulat. Okay? Remember guys, uh, in summary, C for communication, P for pharmacology, and D for documentation or the CPD. This might be look basic to you guys, but failing to master the basics can fail us as well. So you have to remember that one. And as what Spider-Man said, I made a choice. This is my path. Same with you guys. You made the choice of seeking a greener pasture in uh, UK so why not just give your best shot okay so remember that and for so guys if I have time uh, uh, I'm gonna discuss about hand hygiene which is also a central part no in uh, in OSCE in all stations so what do we need to know about it and just remember to spread the love not the germs and i just hope guys that you find this uh, video useful on your oski journey and just don't forget guys to always go back uh, to the basic and it's all for now and see you next time bye bye